Welcome back. Today I'm sharing a tutorial on how to make a wedding cake. So I think a lot of you know by now that I'm planning to make my own wedding cake this summer and I've been making some wedding cakes for my friends to make sure that I feel comfortable with the process and to test out my skills. So I'm going to share all of my tips and tricks for making a four tiered wedding cake. The tiers on this cake are made with 10 inch, 8 inch, 6 inch, and 4 inch cake layers. I've cut out some parchment rounds to line the bottom of the pans with and I've sprayed them with some nonstick cooking spray. You can see I also have placed a flour nail upside down in each pan and this helps get heat into the center of the layer which helps large cake layers bake more evenly and more quickly. So I highly recommend doing this. If your flour nail shifts as you're pouring the batter in, don't worry about it. Just recenter it and press it down to make sure that it's all the way flat against the bottom of the pan. Another great tip for making sure that you get even cake layers is to weigh your pans. If they have the same weight of batter, then you know that they're going to turn out to be the same height. And that is exactly what you're after. Before you pop your cake layers into the oven, it's really great using a kitchen towel to just bang these against your counter to help get any air bubbles out of your layers. By hitting them on the counter, the air bubbles are going to rise to the surface and that way they won't bake in the layers, leaving any pockets of air. The bride wanted four different flavors in her wedding cake, which included red velvet, funfetti, chocolate, and carrot cake. So that first round of layers that were red velvet were made in 10 inch cake pans, and these funfetti layers are eight inches across. So with eight inch cake layers, you don't really need to use a flour nail or any cake pan that's smaller than that, but if you're making layers that are bigger than eight inches, I highly recommend using a flour nail. So half the battle is just making all of your cake batter and baking your cake layers. Once you get to that part and your layers have fully cooled, run an offset spatula around the sides of the pan to help them easily release as you flip them over. This is the point when I like to remove any flour nails that are baked into my layers. I then flip them over and use a large serrated knife to level my cake layers. So if you want to see a more in-depth tutorial on exactly how I level my cake layers and trim away any caramelization, you can click the link in the upper right corner. The main gist of it is just to keep your elbow in close to your body and to try to keep your knife at the same height as you cut. That way you'll just remove the cake top and you'll be left with a perfectly flat and level cake layer. I like to do a couple passes after I remove the top just to make sure that everything is perfectly flat and that there aren't any crumbs left over. I repeated this process with all of my cake layers, and this step is absolutely mandatory. If you want to build a cake that is perfectly straight and nice and level, leveling your cake layers is an absolute must. It's going to make the assembly of the cake so much easier, and you will thank yourself later. As an added bonus, you can taste test the layers by eating some of the cake tops, or you can save them and give them to the bride, which is what I chose to do. The next step is to start assembling those tiers. So to do this, you're gonna need a lot of different cake boards. So I have here an eight inch, a six inch, and a four inch cake board that all have holes cut perfectly in the center. And as you can see, my dowel can easily fit through them, so it's gonna be a breeze to stack these. It's really important that your holes, if you choose to cut them yourself, are centered, or else your tiers are gonna be lopsided, and that is not the look that you're after. To provide support inside the cake, I like to use bubble tea straws. So these are just thick smoothie straws that are made with plastic. If you don't want to use these, you could totally use wooden dowels as well, but I think that these cut a lot more easily and actually provide just as good of support as wooden dowels. So I started building my cake on my 12 inch cake board. So this is a thick cake drum. As you can see, it's got about a half an inch of height there and I cut a hole into the center of it so that my center dowel will really stay in place as I transport the cake. I also added a thin layer of buttercream underneath this first cake layer, and that's a process I'm going to repeat for every tier. That bit of buttercream underneath helps keep the cake layer in place, so that way it won't slide on the cake board. I also added some simple syrup to these cake layers. I don't normally add simple syrup to my cakes, but since these cake layers are sitting out for a little bit longer than normal, the simple syrup is going to help ensure that every bite is super moist, no matter how long it takes you to build this cake. So it's really a great idea and a common practice for wedding cakes. For any of you that don't know what simple syrup is, it's just a mixture of equal parts of granulated sugar and water that you bring to a boil until the sugar dissolves and then you let it cool before you add it to your cake layers. So to assemble this cake, I'm adding a pretty generous layer of buttercream between each cake layer and that's because I want this cake to have a decent amount of height. I wanted each tier to be about four inches tall. So to do that, I have to fill in with a lot of buttercream. The bride was also a huge fan of frosting 
and I didn't want to let her down. Once I had stacked all my cake layers, I began to work on my crumb coat of my cake. And a crumb coat is just a thin layer of frosting that you add to a cake once it's assembled to help trap any crumbs that might have gone rogue and prevent them from getting into your second thicker layer of frosting. You want to cover the cake completely, and once you've done that with your offset spatula, you can use a bench scraper to get your sides nice and smooth. Once you've gotten your crumb coat to where you want it to be and you've smoothed out the top, you can pop your cake into the freezer for about 10 minutes to allow the crumb coat to set. This part always kind of feels like you're playing musical chairs, is where you've crumb coated one cake, then you're crumb coating another, then it's time to add the second layer of frosting to another, and it's kind of maddening. The other thing is you need to make sure that you have enough freezer and fridge space for all of these tiers. It takes up a lot of space, so you want to plan ahead for that and be sure that you have room for it. So as I was doing these, I was swapping them out between the fridge and the freezer, and I first worked on a lot of my crumb coats, and then I started to work on my second layers of frosting. This part wasn't super challenging for me because I stack and assemble cakes all the time, but if you're not as comfortable with the process, I have an in-depth tutorial with all my tips on stacking a cake and frosting it. You can click the link in the upper right corner to learn more about that process. And while you may think that the smaller tiers are easier to frost and the bigger tiers are harder, I actually find it's the other way around. Sometimes these really small tiers, like this top tier that's made with four inch cake layers, was super difficult to frost just because it's so tiny. But no matter how you feel, just be patient as you're doing this and take your time. Once I had finished crumb coating all of my tiers, I started to work on that second thicker layer of frosting. So I always like to start by adding frosting to the top of the cake, spreading it to the edges, and then slowly working my way down. But you might have a different preference. Any style works. Whatever you feel most comfortable with is what I recommend. This is just the method that works best for me. Another piece of advice is to be very generous with your frosting. A lot of people struggle getting smooth sides on their cakes, and one of the main reasons that they struggle is because they don't add enough frosting. So be generous as you do this, and be sure to make loads of frosting. I ended up actually using four batches of frosting for this. To cut our bubble tea straws to the right height, I like to use a ruler to measure the height of the tier, and then very carefully mark and cut the straws. It's really important that you're precise when you're doing this, because if you cut them at an angle, or if the straws are different heights, it can cause the tier above it to be at an angle or to be a bit lopsided, and that's not what you want. Once all four of my straws were the same height, it was time to insert them into the cake. So I like to mark where I'm going to insert the straws before I actually put them into the cake. And you want these to be evenly spaced and a little bit within where the top tier will go. So I like to place them about one inch in from where the edge of the tier will be. I eyeballed this here, but you could also use your cake pan to mark exactly where you want them to be. Another trick is to use a straw that's already cut to do the final push into the cake, just so that way you're not stabbing your fingers into your tier. To insert the wooden dowel, the main center dowel that's going to support the entire cake, I also used my ruler to make sure I got it right in the center. Next, I repeated these steps with my remaining tiers. So for my 8 inch cake layer, I also used 4 bubble tea straws. And then I set to work on adding my second layer to my 6 inch tier. And I noticed that it was a little bit shorter than my other cake layers, and this was just because I used four different types of batter, and inevitably that's going to happen. So if you run into this problem, don't worry, just course correct and use some extra buttercream on top of that tier to get it to the height that you're after. I only used three bubble tea straws in that cake layer because it's only supporting this tiny little four inch tier. So once all of my tiers were properly supported, it was time to assemble the cake. So I like to chill my cake layers before I do this because it makes them way easier to handle. I also made them a day in advance so that allowed the buttercream to firm up and really crust overnight, which makes them so much easier to work with. My only bit of advice is if you're going to do this, you might want to poke a hole through the top center of your tier, or else when that dowel goes through it can push up a lot of the frosting and kind of tear up your cake layer. So I'm spreading a bit of buttercream between each tier to help keep everything together, and I'm also using my large offset spatula to help me lower the tiers on top of one another. Most of these tiers were in the fridge overnight, but I popped them into the freezer right before I stacked them so that I could really handle them like this. So once all your tiers are stacked, it's time to cover up any exposed cake boards or any little gaps that might exist between the tiers. So I'm just piping a bit of frosting at the base of each tier and then smoothing it using a small offset spatula and my bench scraper just to remove any excess.
And then comes the final part, which actually I think is the most stressful, which is figuring out how to transport your cake to the venue. So I got just a simple moving box from the Home Depot. I think it was literally a dollar, but if you planned ahead, you could definitely order a square cake box online that was 12 by 12 or whatever your cake base is. This one actually was 12 by 16, but it worked like a charm and I was super happy with it. So once I taped it together, I took an X-Acto knife and I actually cut the sides so that I could create a flap that would flip down. So I cut the long side of my box, pulled down that side, and then very carefully slid the cake into the box. Disregard my facial expression here, the cake is very heavy, so <laughs> definitely took a lot of effort to get it in there. Once it was safe and sound, I pulled that flap right back up and taped it into place. Right after this, I literally got in an Uber XL with the cake, dropped it off at the venue, and then raced downtown to meet up with the rest of the bridal party. I decorated the cake later that night just with some fresh flowers from the bouquets in the wedding, and it was truly such a magical night. So long story short, wedding cakes are a ton of work, but they're totally worth it. If you have any other questions I might not have covered in this video, I have a really detailed blog post on chillsweets.com about making your own wedding cake that I highly recommend reading. So thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon.